the uh, southwest when I was uh, married, me and the uh, ex and the kids came out here all the time. And several years ago, I discovered Bob's blog and I started following it and finding out that people can do this sort of thing. Now, I wasn't new to camping and I wasn't new to exploring or even being off by myself. So that made it not as difficult as it might be for some other people. And I don't have a whole lot of fears. You know, I, I started out with fears. You know, who doesn't have fears? Uh, especially when, uh, you know, a woman or a man, but especially a woman. Especially. Who's coming out on the road like this. You don't know where you're going to be. You, you know what you think it's going to be like, but you don't know until you get out here. And part of what this is is conquering fears if you have fears. Uh, I've always, yeah, you know what you, what you really need to do is look at your demographics of wherever you're living. I'm willing to bet most people are living in a place that they're much more likely to get attacked, robbed, mugged, what have you, where they're living, within a few miles of where they're living. Out here, it takes an effort. It takes an effort to be out here. And a lot of your predatory types probably aren't going to be coming out here. And I always, I always like to laugh and say, I'm more likely to get mugged walking out of Pilot or Flying J, shoving a donut in my mouth and holding a cup of coffee. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, statistics show that this is one of the uh, public land, National Forest or BLM, mm -hmm. is one of the safest places you can be. It is. Uh, you know, like anywhere, there's people that do drugs, etc., cetera, et cetera. It's It's like if you're anywhere else, you just, you move. If there's people that don't seem right to you, you simply move. So uh, w one of the things I hear from people is that they think they're roving bands of murderers and rapists that just wander the land looking for uh, victims. Have you, you, so you certainly have run into a few of those, haven't you? <laughs> you know, to tell you the truth, I haven't run into a single one. None? None. That can't be. <laughs> Not a single one. And hey, you know, as an older woman, I'm in my 60s, you think they'd, you know, you think they'd be following me to knock me in the head and, and take my little purse from me. I, I haven't had it happen yet. <laughs> and so how long have you been on the road? Coming two years this coming February. Right. And uh, had you ever been uh, an RVer or nomad before? No, 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 not at all. But like I had mentioned earlier, I have spent a lot of time out camping and, uh, and roughing it. Now this, what I've got, my little old camper here, that's not roughing it to me. Right. And I I've have that. I've, my philosophy, like a lot of people that do this, you don't have debt. Right. I, I could have gotten a loan to get a much better camper. I didn't. I saved money and I got something that was paid for free and clear. Now, it's not the nicest camper you've ever seen, but it suits me fine. So uh, that would be another question people have, is how can you possibly live in the tiny space? Okay, uh, you know, I guess it's all a matter of perspective. I feel like my 18-foot camper by 7-foot is a lot of space. But most of the time I'm outside, if you uh, would look inside my camper, I do have a dining room set. I'm an artist. So I have my dining table that's set up for whatever artwork I happen to be doing at the time. Uh, yeah, I guess if somebody's so worried about that, then they're going to wind up having to get something big, which is fine. But with something smaller, you can get to more out-of-the-way places. And I, I just love, you know, I just love being out in the wilderness and the out of way places. Well, here we are, folks. We are on the uh, Colorado River uh, near Blythe, California, between and close to Aaron's, uh, Quartzsite, Arizona. And you're backed in on the river. We are just right over there. A stone's throw, literally, is the river. Oh, it is. It's uh, sometimes when I just look around and I think about my life and how it's changed, I, I am so very fortunate 
because I stepped out and did what I wanted to do. And, you know, when I started this, I told my family and some friends, I said, uh, you know, I want to do this. I've thought about doing this for a long time. I'll either sink or swim. Either way, I'll be okay. Uh, and I, you know, well, when you start out this, your relatives and everyone comes out of the woodwork because they're so worried that you're going to die and those roving bands are waiting for you right over the state border. There, you probably heard that a lot. <laughs> yes. A single woman, you can't possibly <laughs> stay safe. Yes, yes indeed. Yeah, but it's just, just so very fortunate that I stepped out and I got... You, this wasn't comfortable for me. This was very scary. So do. you were afraid at oh, first. Oh, uh, yeah. I talk like I'm not afraid of anything. That's, you know, I'm exaggerating. Yes, I was very afraid. I was in a situation in Florida with other campers from Cheap RV Living that I had met. I'd never met them before. And they sort of took me under, under their wing and helped me out quite a bit. And what happened is that they're their uh, reservations were up before mine at one of the Southwest Florida management districts and I forced myself to stay in the swamp well by yourself by myself with the the, uh, the my big dog was just a puppy then and it was with her I forced myself to stay you don't know what all kinds of noises are <laughs> out if there's a swamp all around you there was no one else in the campground no one else and now you, and again, a hunter would come in. And you probably saw Deliverance when you were young. <laughs> <I> kept, <laughs> so did the Deliverance theme run through your I mind? I kept listening for the vibe. Yeah, I kept listening. <laughs> I certainly did. But once those four days were up and my friends got their reservations in order, they came back again. And, uh, you know, then, we, then I moved on with others. But once I did that, I found out that life wasn't nearly as scary except for those noises that you right. hear in the swamps. And I'll tell you, if I go back again, I'll still be scared of the swamps by really? myself. Yeah. Well, so you found that uh, having a group to go to made it so much easier and you could expand from there. It did. It did. And uh, I would say I was lucky to find those people, but it seems like as long as you're halfway friendly, there are so many people out here, and not just this group, not just the cheap RV living. There's so many there friendly are. people out here, and I think it's because they're not living 20 feet from their neighbors. Right. I really do. And you, you have the time and the energy to expend with other people. And, you know, as to loneliness, um, you can be lonely out here, but you'd almost have to try. Right. Because there are so many people, and you don't have to be with people all the time. Right. You don't. You probably don't want to be. No, no. Even me, and I'm, I'm a very uh, friendly, outgoing person, an extrovert, but I can't deal with being with people all the time either, like most. But I think simply because people don't have to be next to each other, they're friendlier out here. I know. I think a lot of it is the stress of our normal lives falls away. And with the stress and the returning to nature, people are just happier. Oh, no kidding. Uh, another thing, I very, you know, I don't usually see people that do nothing but stay in their van or their camper. They're always out walking, bicycling. And I'm not talking about young people. I'm, you know, I'm talking about people in their 60s on up. And you see them outside all the time doing something. They may only stop by or they may wave or, you know, say hi and nothing else, but they're out doing something for themselves. And, you know, doing something for yourself is staying in shape. And staying alive. for Staying alive. And happily alive, not mm -hmm. just enduring to the end. Yeah, not sitting watching TV. Right. You know, and drinking pop or beer, you know, they're out doing things. Well, for, you know. Actually, you can't get TV out here half the time anyway, no, right, so it doesn't right, matter. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that goes back to your your point that you live out of the rig more than you live in it. I, I certainly do. I certainly do. Uh, one thing that I do miss, I'm from Ohio, we, got, we get a lot of rain. I miss hearing the rain. Oh, really? Yeah. So when we do get the rain around here, I'm happy to, happy to hear it. 
Well, I've gotten so used to being uh, in the desert that the rain, I no longer enjoy the rain. Oh. So, And we've had a pretty <laughs> rainy season so far. You were, must have been happy with that. Yeah, I was, yeah. yeah. Unbelievably, yeah. And now you've been doing this a couple of years, and so you have kind of uh, turned the tables, and now you are, and you are the first one when I, that I think of. You are now taking the newcomers in and taking them under your wing. Well, yes, I, I enjoy it. Um, I've, I've sent you people. Yeah, I know you have. I, I will probably send you more people because <laughs> you're the first one I think of. Yeah, there, it, yeah and it may, last year at the uh, first RTR, I think as people were coming in and you'd sort of feel them out and you sent the right people to me, to my campsite and told them where to find me. And I, I thought that, oh, cool, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Some people like me, well, a lot of people are like me, though. They feel the need to help out and take care of right. other people. Yes. And, you know, we, we serve our purposes and we're, you know, and I've got another friend who's not here right now, Beth, but Beth is always willing to help out and mentor the new people too and if I can do it if she can do it whoever you why not right why not this is this looks easy it's not easy you know it's it's a lot more attitude than how easy it is right if you're easy going and you think you know well I'll figure it out anyway so it didn't work out then you'll be in better shape than you can't control everything out here you can't control your vehicle, you can't control your camper, your van, the weather. Well, a lot of people come to me uh, and to all of us in kind of hard financial times. And I have sent people to you in that situation uh, because this, this was their only choice. They just had no choice. Well, it's easy to relate with people like that. I didn't start out in a bad financial situation, but you know with houses and things that I had I've gotten in that shape uh, due to rentals that haven't done well for me so I won't recommend that to anyone but that's <laughs> beside the point now and I don't mind saying this my social security is abysmal I'm at an age group of women who stayed home to take care of their children instead right. of working and there's a lot of women, a lot more than you may. I don't know if you even realize it, Bob. I do oh, because you do. I hear from them. I just retired and I have 500, 600 a month in Social Security. It's like, how can you live on you that? You can't. Uh uh. Out here, because I'm very careful, I had no, I had no debt. I still have no debt. Well, okay, I take that back. I keep a little debt, like at Walmart. For one thing, when you keep just a little. It keeps your credit rating, your credit scores up, or at least that's what I've been told. Right. So, but I don't have much. I could pay it right now if I wanted to. But yeah, I just get, you know, a little over 600 a month. And there's women that get even less than oh, I, I do. do. No, yes. Less than I do. Now, so you're living on 600 a month? Yes, I am. Wow. Um, most months I live very well. I have other girlfriends and some other men and will occasionally... We'll go out to movies. We'll go out to eat. Uh, when I first started, I went flit it from here to there. But now I'm happy to stay in one place and do my artwork. So I'm using very little money for gasoline. Um, you, know, move, you know, when you're able to stay in one place for two weeks, you're doing pretty darn well. And what else we do with the uh, people on our campsite, it's always... I'm going into town, do you need something, or text, or whatever, or we all get together and go together and we'll split gas and costs and you can do it. You yep. can do it you if can. you have, you know, it's a lot of these people, me, it, it became a have to situation. Right. right. And I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. Um, so there are a lot of people who are thinking, are in your situation, between 500, seven, 800, 1,000 a month, mm -hmm. and they think that their life's pretty much over, you're here to say it doesn't have to be. No, I see that. I see that not just on your forum, but other places that people are so distraught. And it's, like you said, it's not true. You make a, you make a little budget, you know that something's gonna happen. It always does. It you always know? does. You always need something. Another thing, the people who realize 
they're not the only one that needs new tires or whose radiator busted or who needs something. Um, I've seen people out here who get so upset because something goes bad. Well, it goes bad for everybody. And the people who make it out here are the people that go with the flow and realize things happen. Right. Oh, you know, and then another thing, you know, and I'm not going to disagree with people who say, well, every woman needs to know how to change your own oil and do all this other stuff. No, change tires, that's one thing. You know, you should do that because you never know. Um, I keep aside money for if I have to hire a mechanic because I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, oh, well, there you either. go. There you go. <laughs> and I'm a man and I'm supposed to. Yeah, and it's it would be wonderful right. for someone that could do all that. Then you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have to worry as much. But right. Yeah. So you, essentially, you keep a, a good sized emergency fund just for the emergency. Oh my goodness, yes. Because, okay, uh, my car is fully insured, but if something strange happened, I, you know, I would be able to go out and get a used van. Probably not a used truck, they seem to be more. But I could go out and get something if I had to. It's going to hurt but I can and what I hate to see and but you know people have no choice sometimes is that they come out here or anywhere and they have no padding no cushion right that is sad it is and it's you know I just look at them and I think oh that's scary because you know even though I've got a padding and a cushion at any time it could be taken gone yeah and well, then the I, engine on your rig oh yeah well the tranny which is very common yeah so, I, you know, I like to have enough that if I have to go out, I can find something that I, something used and drive off the lot with it. Right. Yeah. If you, if you have enough to buy, either rebuild, I think 3000 is what I recommend to people. You maybe can get a rebuilt transmission or buy a whole new rig and start over. Yeah. You'll never be homeless. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that takes away so many fears that you can have and keep you from sleeping at night when you know you do you know that you've worked and you may have to work longer in order to save up enough right and you may this. and people who come out here without any uh any emergency fund uh, they can always get a job work yeah. a summer as a campground host and at the end of the summer they'll have an emergency fund yes they will um my friend beth that i mentioned she worked up in canada for a couple of months and she walked away with about four grand. Right. That's not hard to do. No. Because, I, and I happen to know Beth's situation, mm -hmm. so it was like campground hosting. She's somewhere she can't hardly spend any money. Yes. So yes. the money that came in, she kept. <laughs> yes. That's what counts, how much yes. you keep. Yes. Not how much you get, it's how much you get Yeah, to keep. now that you mentioned that, I think maybe she needs to take me out to the next dinner. Huh? I think you might be right. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds right uh. to me. So, yeah, if you... Um, if you eliminate any housing costs, and you have solar, mm -hmm. so, uh, and we'll talk about, you don't even dump your tanks. No, I don't. Uh, and so your your co housing costs are virtually non-existent. That's that's correct. So you have food, which mm -hmm. 600 a month will more than cover food. Yes. Uh, you you dr drive the minimum, mm -hmm. very little in gas. Uh, are you on, how, or do you have health insurance? I do through Arizona now. I'm I'm right at the lower end, so yes, I have health insurance. Good. Yeah. Uh, because well, it really worked out well for me this summer. I have so many people that I he, that ask me, "Aren't you afraid you'll get sick?" Well, yeah, I am. Aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what if you fall? Well, you know, when I was living in my house, I fell off. I I fell off my porch one time. And uh, I laid out there for quite a while before the next door neighbor came home and saw me. Now, that falls under the heading of things happen. Right, now, everywhere. They do. Now, most of the time I'm in a campground with like-minded folks, you know, we all have dogs or if we don't, you know, they all like dogs. Uh, you know, we sit around the camp. It's just a nice little communities that I, that I hang with. And back in the summer in Flagstaff, I became very, very ill. 
I had something that four dollars worth of medicine a month would have taken care of, but I literally almost died. And I was in the hospital, you know, if you're in the hospital for three night days and nights, you know you're sick nowadays. Yes. But I had people that had noticed that I wasn't acting right. I was almost acting like I was having strokes, little mini strokes. And I had a uh, friend who took me into the emergency room. The people at, back at camp, they, I've got two dogs. I've got a big dog and this little one. They took care of my dogs. I, I didn't have to worry. When I came home, they took care of me. They fed me until I could get back on my feet. They, they took care of my dogs again. Um, then, what was it, about a month ago, I was able to get cataract surgery on each eye. That's how I'm not sitting here looking cool. I can't take these sunglasses off in the sun. But I had to drive up to Cottonwood and I spent, the, spent a couple of nights actually at my ex-husband's place and his wife's place. And they took good care of me. Saw to it that I got in to get each eye done. But the point being, while I was gone, my dogs were taken care of. My rig was taken care of. When I got back, you know, it was it got funny because the women and men in my campsite over in Ehrenberg, they because I wasn't supposed to lift anything, they absolutely would not lift any let me lift anything, and they'd give me a hard time if I tried to. So, even even that, there are people that will help you. You you know you just have to put yourself out there and ask or you know once you've become have a little community if you choose to have a little community and community means I can be a mile away and they will still help me out and oh and there's another fellow who was a uh, past member who had a bad heart issue mm -hmm. back during Flagstaff right now I didn't do as much to help him as a uh, an another pair of campers did but they're still hauling his van around right uh, he had to be taken up uh, taken up to his home and uh, just all kinds of stuff so it's, he was in the hospital for like a month yes or more yes two. yes he was yeah so it and his dog and everything his oh, camp his van mm -hmm. so between me and Wayne and Lori and like I said mainly Wayne and Lori who are still dealing with his his, his things um, and you know the last we heard it's going to be another month or so before he can get out right again but there's people that will help you and the key is community is community it's uh you know this fellow he was always nice he barely spoke but a lot of people out here are like that yeah but people pulled together when he needed something and to tell you the truth we were uh, the three of us were up in Flagstaff it was cold before we were able to get everything straightened out with him and his dog and could start moving from place to place right yeah yeah so you you went the extra mile and made the sacrifice and you took care of a friend well yes and you know what comes around goes around it does indeed you've got the same oh yeah yeah well, Diane, thank you so much for uh, sharing your life with it. There's just an, an incredible amount of wisdom in what you just shared with us. I hope, folks, I hope you can really feel the sincerity and honesty and genuineness that, that is coming here. Well, thank you. Would you like to see the inside of my rig? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do that. Okay. Mm -hmm.